Good morning. Good morning, everybody. The wonderful thing about real estate is you can do it anywhere. Hello from yes. Mexico. <laughs> That's awesome. Good time to be in Mexico, I'm sure, right? With the weather oh. changing and whatnot. Oh, 100%. It goes cold and I'm like, I'm out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> We've had unusually uh, cold times here too in Prescott. It's, uh, yeah, it seemed to have gotten cold overnight. Really early in October as well. So different year, but I'm here. So yeah, very, you're very similar to us in the Carolinas. In the Carolinas, yeah. it, goes, it goes cold and then it'll be 75. I saw a post of everybody the other day like, oh, it's 80 degrees. Yeah. Like, okay. <laughs> yep. yep. It's crazy. Yeah. Usually I'm used to not really being this cold until, you know, middle of December or whatnot, but it's uh, been, been chilly. So it's been nippy. Yeah. Have you been working a lot since you've been in Mexico? Absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing. Right. Thank goodness. Yes, I think this is, we, we actually discussed this, me and my husband today. This is the first vacation we've taken all year. Like when I say vacation, like turn off, don't do anything. I even bought a novel in the airport so I wouldn't read a business book. Like that's how much yes. off I am. And it feels so good. Yeah, right. Dude, that's amazing. And you're going to come back refreshed, right? So I just did a video on that, uh, making sure that you're at least taking a day off or even half a day, you know, just take some time. Because I remember in the beginning of my career, I mean, I was so passionate. I was just in, in, in all the time, all the time, all the time. And then I remember one day on a Sunday, I just remember being like, damn, this is really busy right now. And Monday is going to be triple this. And I was just like, wow, it was just crazy. But those uh, few awesome, amazing years really helped me to get to a good point. So I was running my numbers on cash flow and everything recently, or this weekend I built out an Excel spreadsheet. I was pretty happy with the numbers that I came up with. So I love it. I love it. Yeah. I know yeah. it is it is so true. And I will say the universe has already blessed me. I think it's just reinforcing that I should be on vacation because I have a new buyer in the 700s and a new listing that's going to end up coming up right when we nice. get so heck yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. That's amazing. So we want to talk about 2023, right? Yeah. So there's there's about a bajillion topics we could talk with you guys, you know, about, but 2023 is already here. You know, you guys saw that in the message I, we sent out the other night. 2023 is here. We're already in it, whether you guys know it or not. I know it's November 2022, but what we know about real estate is everything shows up when like 60 to 90 days out, right? So even yeah. if you get something right now, yeah, you might get that perfect buyer or seller that sells in a day and goes under contract and you're closing and that's great. Everybody wants that. The likelihood, slim. The likelihood is you're probably going to work with that person for the next 60 days which means you're already in January and a lot of people don't realize that. So I figured we'd have a good chat this morning, a tete -a -tete, uh, all about the goal setting. Cause I think not everybody knows how to set those goals either. Um, yeah. you know, I didn't my first year, my first year in real estate, it was, if I can make 50 K I'll keep going. Like literally that was my goal. It was like, if I can make what I was making at my corporate job that I hated, I could at least do that. On my terms, I will keep going in real estate. And if not, then I'll find something else. But I'm going to give it everything I've got. So that's what ended up happening. But I ended up doubling, actually more than doubling that. And I was like, oh, this is pretty cool. But I didn't know how to set that goal. Like I didn't even know what I was doing coming into it, what actions I had to take, none of that. I think this would be a perfect opportunity to help people set some goals today. Yeah, I think that's great. I shifted, I think, it was my second year in real estate to realize that what I was doing in October was going to be what, what I was going to make in January, essentially. Because first year I did okay, 46,000. My second year I made 180, but I didn't have any closings in January after my second year going into my third year. And I was like, this is never happening again. It's because I got sick, so I wasn't prospecting. Yeah. for late october november zero zero closings it was just unreal it's like this is never happening again so yeah. anyways amazing. i was able to turn that around from zero yeah to making over three hundred thousand dollars that year right and then six hundred thousand then 775 then 897 and you know so if yeah. even if you're in that down you have zero closings for january that doesn't matter like you can still no. push through yeah. My first, my first six hundred thousand dollar year, my January was almost nothing. My February, yeah. was almost nothing, and yeah. it was it was like, oh shit, you know, like it was. It, we were getting caught up on things from the previous year and stuff was happening. But it's amazing because you can always correlate, and that's why I would tell you guys right now, like track your numbers. 
Um, side note, go ahead and drop in the chat box, whether you're watching this recorded or live, and let us know if you'd be interested in getting my tracker. I know me and James have different trackers. We could share both of them, but I have a tracker where literally now it's all in the same spreadsheet. I can click back year to year to year on this spreadsheet. I know it's old school. It's old school. It's simple, but it works. And it's yeah. so interesting going back and seeing previous year's numbers and trends because starting of this year, January, February, were stacked. Like, yeah gorgeous months absolutely gorgeous months but we did the work october november december so if you're sitting here going well crap there's nothing in the pipeline right now i'm already screwed that's why we're here <laughs> yeah and so i got a couple things to add to that kayla and i've been thinking about this often is we talk about goal setting right but yeah. goals are great but how are you going to hit those goals? Like what activities do you have to do in order to hit that $300,000 mark, right? So let's reverse engineer this, just like how I did some videos on price adjusting and re reverse engineering that. So if you want to make 300,000, right? And so you want to make $300,000 and your average commission check is say $10,000, right? So how many deals do you need to do? You need to do 30, right? How long does it take you to get a deal? How many hours of prospecting? So you need to break, start looking at your numbers now in November and December, which they're going to be a little skewed. So they should be better come like January, February, March, and April, because those are historically some like our best months, right? These That's are slower months. Too, right? Like if we're comparing yeah. to last year's numbers, yeah, it could have taken two phone calls and you've got a deal going. It's <laughs> going to change a little bit. That's okay. It will. But if you're doing the activities like the canceled expireds for sell by owners, you're going to be fine. And if you're following up with your sphere of influence, you're going to be fine. Because there's other a lot of agents that are leaving the market, which is going to give you more market share. The more you know about the market, the more you're going to be trusted. It's no longer I can put a sign up in my yard and sell a house or my cousin's friend just got their real estate license and it's going to work with me. It's That's changing. So for all the negative stuff out there, these are the positive things. And you can still make a crap ton of money in this market by following the stuff that we're going to be teaching and the group coaching that we'll be talking about here soon, you know, at some point in time that we're going to get going. So what you want to do is reverse engineer that, right? So it takes, somebody just said back to the basics. I don't know if that was you or not, 100%. But totally back to the basics, right? So you want to make $300,000, your average commission check, and you want to look at that for the year because now you have a good idea. What What is that, right? So let's just say $10,000. So then you need to do 30 deals. So if you need to do 30 deals, how many listings do you have to get what's your closing ratio on the listing appointments and then what's your success rate of selling that listing and just base it off of listings and then kind of throw buyers in there like a supplement but your 300,000 should come off of listings only in my opinion to work that because then you can build out a really good buyer business and get a buyer agent to work with you so you need to track what's the activities i need to be doing to be able to get 30 listings throughout the year sold easy now Totally easy. Say, there's there's some people that are on here that have done that, like you and I have done that, obviously. But there's other people on here that are they've not hit that level yet. In my first few years, those numbers were very different than what they are now. You know, if I were to look at my numbers now versus back in the day, they're different. I can convert someone far quicker. You know, I can make yeah. five phone calls, have five contacts, and convert two of them into an appointment. Yeah. You know, that's that's a pretty high conversion rate to an appointment. However, if you are just getting started, if you're like, hey, I'm going to practice the scripts, I'm going to do all the things that I need to do to get business going, but I am newer or it is new to me, which don't mm -hmm. be ashamed if this is just a new practice to you, get started. It's okay. But what I would say is you're probably going to have to go with the rule of thumb. You're probably going to need 20 contacts to one appointment set. So that's kind of a, it's a rule of thumb, very average number. But if you don't have a number to work with because you're not quite sure what your numbers are, start with that. Yeah. 20 contacts. And I mean, like you spoke with them, right? Or even I would go so far as to say you actually had a text conversation, but text is good to get someone to the phone. Yeah. And that's, that's one rule of thumb that I would give anybody. Text is a way to connect to make sure they're actually alive. Get yeah. Them phone, the phone is where you set the appointment. So don't try and push setting appointments on text. It usually does not work. More of a, when's a good time for you that we can connect via phone and keep calling. You can hit that 20. I think that's a good starting point if you're new to this. 20? 20 is amazing. Yeah. If you hit 20, you're going to make a hundred grand easy. If you hit 20, you're most likely going to get, and that's a hundred people a day or 
a week, you're most likely going to be able to get to that $300,000 mark. As long as you're following the right listing presentation and follow-up skills are good and whatnot on that, then you should be fine. What Kayla's talking about is, and correct me if I'm wrong, wrong, but 20 new contacts, not, hey, I did, you know, I followed up with some of my SOI and some of my follow-ups in my calendar and that counts as a contact. That does not, correct? It's brand new contacts. New contacts. And then the cool thing is now you've got follow-up after that. So yeah. what I would do, and, and you guys, by the way, the phone is not the only place to do this, right? Like I challenged myself uh, like three days in a row to go make a hundred contacts in a day, new, new people. I'd go to the grocery store, I'd go out to grab lunch and I'd hit people's tables as I was walking out. I mean, you've got to have a little bit of cojones sometimes to like walk up to a group of people. By the way, walking up to a table, five counts for five. All right. So, you know, get a little creative with it. But you can ask the person at Starbucks, do you know anybody looking to buy or sell real estate? See, a lot of people don't see these as contacts, but these are connections with other people that you're making physically. Yeah, the 16-year-old barista is probably not selling a house. However, what are you not seeing? Could it be her grandmother? Could it be her parents? Could it be her friend's parents? Could it be her cousin? Right? We underestimate. Sometimes we we look at someone and go, oh, they wouldn't be a good fit. Oh, they wouldn't get Zaxby's. They would never buy a house. Guess what? Buddy of mine does phenomenal and he has never made a cold call. He really? does a constant video and every human being that has a pulse, he tells them that he's a real estate agent. He asks them if they want to buy or sell or who they might know. And he gets their contact information regardless of who they are, because he knows that there's a six degree of separation. So if you guys are going, eh, the phone isn't for me, that's okay. Like for, for James and myself, we know that is the fastest way to get our goal met. If you're not that person, you need to at least have gusto to go out and go meet people. You have to go get in contact. Don't do anything. Don't go on Facebook and, you know, post. That's passive. That's passive marketing. We're talking about actively prospecting in a shifting market to gain market share. That's going to get you to your goal. You don't have to pick up the phone and call. You could also do like a text message campaign and whatnot, which I think is a great idea. And I've had uh, some of my team doing that right now. Yeah. And it's been great. We've gotten like four new leads through that, you know, because a lot of people don't want to pick up their phone. They'd rather send, send a text message or do a Facebook live and say, hey, what are your questions about the market right now? Um, do you, does anybody want to see CMA? You know, just kind of get on there and see what questions that your friend group has on Instagram and Facebook, and you'll get leads through that as well, you know, but at the same time, you're contributing. So, and I'm putting all this in here. So anybody that's following later, they can see it. You just said it, go back in time, right? Like, like backtrack. You want to make X dollars. Let's do the math for everybody real quick. Just that you guys have a clear understanding of what we mean by this. So start with the end in mind. How much do you want to make? There's there's no number that's right or wrong. You want to make an extra $50,000 a year, a little bit in the bank for savings, maybe take, take the kids on a vacation. There's nothing wrong with that. However, you still need a plan. You got to start with how much do I want to make? Then you start to back out of it. The next step would be, what is the average commission? Now, I know we as real estate agents go, oh, 3%. Everything's 3%. However, as it, I'm sure you're seeing this in your market as well, 3% is not the average anymore. If you're a buyer's agent, in most cases, it's two, two and a half, right? And yes, yeah. you can negotiate with your client to get the other percentage, but it was pretty hard to do that the last little while when they were having to bring an extra 20 to 80K in cash just to get the house on top of that. They didn't yeah. have the ability to pay that. So what we had to do was alter and understand that's not what we were going to make. Right. So figure out what that would be in your market. I recommend 2.75% because that would be sell side and buy side, right? You're averaging. We're going to assume you're going to do 50, 50 of each. And it might not be that my first year I was 70% listings and my second year was like 60% listings. So it, it altered, it changed. I got more buyers after that because people started coming back So understand it's not going to be exact. Yeah. 0.75 and figure out what the average is in your market. Now I would add, and you're probably gonna add this too, the average of the market might not be your average. I know it wasn't my first couple of years in the business. And even now it's, it's a little bit higher than what the average is. So if you've got past sales that you can lean on to say, what's my average, use your average. I mean, what would you suggest on that? Um, I always go super conservative. So I would go at two and a half percent and see what that is. I would take the data that I have up to this year. So I'd take the total amount of commission I made, divide that by the amount of deals I made, 
and plug that in. And then I would subtract 10 to 15% from that sales price, from that average sales price or that commission check, because I do think that prices may adjust it to that. So just so that you're giving yourself the worst case scenario, those would be the some of the best things for somebody to do if they wanted to be as realistic as possible with that. I think the other thing that we're kind of missing too, or to kind of add in is if somebody's at a good spot with their team and or their individual sales and whatnot, is thinking about, okay, if I want to get to X or I want to stay at X, what do I need to, who do I need to hire or what system do I need to put in place to be able to continue to do this and have this success? Because you want to be thinking forward right now. Right now is when you want to be thinking forward because you're going to start slowing down with holidays. You'll still work if you want to, the amount you want to, but maybe you're working on systems rather than prospecting as much or whatnot. So you're not bothering people or whatever you want to tell yourself. But you're definitely looking at, okay, what do I need to implement in order to keep this going, make this better, it's better. And when I say make this better, I don't mean make more money or do more deals, but maybe make it a little bit easier on yourself, right? Like who can I leverage? Who, but yes, so great book. And I'm gonna yeah. tell you guys this book, basically James just said it, it's very simple. Who, not how, get that yeah. book. It'll make you think so differently. And that's really what it comes down to, right? A lot of us wait till our hair is on fire and then we back off of the one thing that's making the money, which is prospecting because yeah. we want to keep things afloat versus make it a part of the plan to find a transaction coordinator. Like over the next yeah. two to three months, start interviewing companies that do transaction coordination work, start looking into virtual assistants, start doing those things. The really interesting thing is you're never going to be ready to hire. Like, I don't know about you. I, I wasn't ready. Like I was ready, but I wasn't ready. It was scary because it was one of those, okay, I'm, I'm taking someone else's livelihood onto myself. But yeah. The thing is it'll actually push you harder. Because it does. You've, yeah. got, you've got to show up. You have to put food on not only your family's table, but now this other person, it gives you a ton more accountability when it's not just you. Yeah. You're like oh, I've got to do this. I have to show up. Um, yeah. But then you've already got the plan, right? You already got the person picked out or the company picked out, whatever it may be. You don't have to hire someone full time. I will tell you that you can hire companies out there that they just do transaction coordination work. But you guys, the paperwork is not where you need to be spending your time. No, you need to get away from the admin as quickly as possible. You just got to be the person that talks to other people. That's where you're going to make the most amount of money. And I mean, that's your job, right? Like if you want to be a transaction coordinator or do admin, then do that. You know, don't. <laughs> There's plenty of agents out there that need help. So I'm sure someone would yeah. love to give you that job. And that's the thing. It's at, you're going to want to start doing it. You're going to be scared to do it. Come to us, talk to us if you're not sure, if you're ready for that. We can run through your numbers and see what your goals and where your pipeline is looking. But I recommend at the very least, start doing the research. It's yeah. like anything, unless you start looking at it and have a plan of action of what you would do when you get to that point, you're not going to take the action yeah. like at all because you don't have a plan. You don't even know. It's like saying, oh, I want to buy a car or yeah. for our clients. I want to buy a house, but why don't they? Yeah. Usually because they don't have a plan. Usually because they think they need $300,000 in cash that they'll never have in their lives to buy a house. Meanwhile, yeah. they need $10,000 and we can help guide them the rest of the way to buying it. So you need to teach yourself how to make those hiring decisions. That is one of the scariest things, which is so worth it. So worth yeah. it. So I'm glad you brought that up. Three things that I think we all should focus on. You should read the book called The Miracle Morning by Hal Alrod for Real Estate yes. Agents. I think that's amazing. I think you should talk to your accountant as soon as possible about like what's your tax situation like? So you have an idea of that and what you can do to save on taxes before you go into the new year. And hopefully that'll change your idea on just being like a real estate agent. Cause I do think that being a real estate agent is amazing, but I think being a real estate agent and a real estate investor and having those two together are incredible. So, because we're in the best, uh, occupants or we're in the best job to be able to tie those two in together. And the third one is I would buy the game cash flow by rich dad, poor dad and play that with your friends. That's going to give you a great understanding of what well, your budget, how money works and how it's important to seek those deals for you because there's going to be deals that are going to be coming up and you're going to come across a lot of those deals and be the first person to have access to that. So I'm yeah. typing all this in here for everybody. I would recommend <laughs> Rat Race by Rich Dad Poor Dad, the game. So much fun. And I will it also is. It's great. 
you guys might have the mindset where you're because everybody I'll, I'll give a little background you know this it's at random you get a lifestyle that is picked for you right you've got the lawyer the doctor the teacher the janitor and the janitor has won this game multiple times why because no matter where you're starting from this is the cool part no matter your starting point in life or your yeah. you have the ability to win yeah and love the way that that plays out because some of you guys might have some limiting beliefs right now where you've never earned that amount the amount that is your goal you've never come close to so for yeah. you you may be thinking that this isn't possible for you because it's never happened that maybe you're the first one in your family to ever even think about this and that's just not true i think if you play that game, not only are you going to have a great time, but you're going to have an awesome understanding of, again, like how money works. And you'll bring that into your real estate career. When you go to a listing appointment and the lady has 14 cats and needs to sell the house, but can't because she has 14 cats and she can't clean it up. And she's like, I just need a cash offer or whatnot. Then you can go in and be the investor. You buy it, you fix and flip it, change it into a rental or do wholesale. I can't really know about, which I wish I would have known about before. You know, um, so there's oh, so, so many deals that could have, Yeah, there are so many deals I could have helped out on. And when it said it was like, all right, sorry, I can't help you. Yeah, yeah, dude. I have counted up so many opportunities that I missed out on because I didn't understand what wholesale was, yeah, right? It's so. adding up some of those opportunities. I've been there. I'm like, oh, I should stop counting. I should really just stop counting. It just, yeah, it just but me. now let's talk about what, what it is now, right? Now, in 18 months since learning how to do wholesaling, if you count the equity and properties that I bought from finding them through wholesale and the income and whatnot, I'm like pretty close to probably like 600 grand in 18 months. And okay. that's not been a ton of work. I mean, I got the right people in place and we had a good dispo guy and he did awesome. The startup cost was a lot to get that going and continues, but I always wanted to buy real estate so that I could get out, out of the hamster wheel, right? And do what I want to do. And that's what's allowed me, the investing that I've done in real estate is what allows me to be on this call with you today to do coaching and helping others get to that spot, right? So um, because of the work I put in for that. So you just have to get your mindset right on what you want and how you can add different weapons to the arsenal of what you're going to take into 2023. I love that. Now yeah. I want to conclude our conversation because I know we went kind of high level and hopefully you guys understand. Um, and yeah. I'll put the map in the email that I send out later to you guys with this link. I want to add one last piece here. And it's, if you guys are looking at your pipeline right now and you're like, shit, like I, I'm already behind. January is going to be sparse. What am I going to do? There's no way I can hit my goals if I'm already behind. I will tell you right now. Yes, you can. And I think one of the best things is that you're, if you take accountability right now that you're not already set up where you want to be, you can make a mindset shift, a belief shift, but it's going to start with you guys having the belief shift, right? So until you believe it, you can't achieve it. Everybody yeah. wants to be a millionaire, but so few believe they actually can be or that they deserve to be so i highly recommend you guys really get focused on yes not only is this doable i am worthy of achieving it and just start pounding it out now i will tell you right now the first my first year in real estate literally i was in it a month and i had heard this phrase as i started in the fall of 2015 that's you know because that's a great time to start everybody's like why would you start in fall it's a slow time and i'm like i don't know any different like you know yeah yeah i had exactly. no idea and um, so I got started and what I realized was someone had used the phrase real Lorella. So think about Cinderella, the clock strikes 12 and what happens? Her stuff turns into a pumpkin. She turns back into grubby clothes and has to run home. Well, what happens is when the clock strikes October 31st, suddenly real estate agents take two full months off. Yeah. Because of the holidays, you guys, the holidays are like four days. They are four days. You've got before Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving Day, then you've got Christmas and maybe Christmas Eve, right? Yeah. And if you want to throw in New Year's, sure, six. That is six days of two full months. But people hit pause button. And when I say people, I mean real estate agents. Maybe they hustled yeah. hard in summer and they're like, whatever, I'm going to take my foot off the gas pedal and post, coast. Here's what I'll tell you. This is the best opportunity not to play catch up but to literally spring ahead. If you want to spring ahead, this is your moment when everybody else, I say everybody, most, most have either hit the pause button, they took their foot off the accelerator and they are looking the other way and you can cruise right past them. No one is calling, no one is texting, no one is reaching out to past clients. They're just not doing it. You can gain so much market share in these next two months 
this is like prime time. You are, and I'm gonna, that's why I'm telling you, you are not behind if you take the opportunity that's being given to you the next two months. And yeah. your February, March, April is gonna look freaking stellar. Don't worry about January. It's okay. Yeah. January is like a big goose egg. You will be okay. And you know what the best part about all that is? Is when you're doing the prospecting in November and December and you start getting the calls middle of January, end of January, February, March, April, May, because you did all those calls in November and you were the one that kept following up and you were their first call. Yeah. That's amazing. And it feels so dang good. It's just incredible. So. That's such a great point. Yeah. Because you guys, you're, you're probably not going to get them on the first call. You're going to get no. them on the fourth, fifth, 10th, 15th. No. They have their mind made up sometimes that they are going to list after New Year's. It's okay. Yes. Keep yep. Calling them because you're going to be the one they remember. They're going to pick up the phone and go, Kayla, so glad you called. Yes, we are ready to schedule. Yeah. Yep. Okay, great. Let's do it. So I, I would leave you guys with that is don't be scared if you already feel like you're behind because mm -hmm. these few months are the ideal months to get ahead and beat the pack. And yeah. you will do it if you apply what we were talking about today. Just it's taking that action, but it's taking massive action consistently. So make yeah. your 60 day calendar and just cross it out each day you hit that 20 contacts a day. You will be amazed what your business will do. Yeah. Hit those turbo lead sources too. If you if you're scared of them, try it out. You may not, you may like it. You may see some really good success. And when I say like turbo or hyper leads, I'm meaning forceful banners canceled and expired, right? And then some circle prospecting. Try them out, see what it, how it feels. And if it feels not as bad as what you think it's gonna be, keep going after it. If it's as terrible as you thought it was gonna be, stop it and do some of the stuff that Kayla and I will teach you guys in the group coaching once we get that going, um, such as like sending direct messages on Facebook, saying, taking your friends out for dinner, like, you know, uh, going to meetups, etc. You know, so there's so much out there. It's incredible. So many, so many. And if you guys are interested in group coaching, we are getting ready to launch here soon. Uh, we've actually had a lot of people reaching out to us, uh, figuring out if we were going to do that, which we didn't yeah. intend on doing it for a little while, but you guys spoke and we're listening. So if you are interested in doing group coaching, go ahead and drop a DM or put it in the chat box below that you're interested in group coaching. Just type group coaching in. Yeah. Um, and we'll reach out. It, our goal is just to get you guys where you need to go. We're all going to win together and people are going to be leaving the market. So we want those that are remaining to be strong. Um, yeah. And I will give you a last but not least, I brought on an, an inside sales agent. She literally nice. just started. Yeah, she's never yeah. made a cold call or anything. And guys, if you're scared of making these calls, she's literally a stay at home mom. She calls two to four, two to three hours a day when she can and helps set appointments for me. Now she has no training, yeah. no training at all. She has set in the last week, her first week on, she set six appointments. That's crazy. That's so awesome. Dude, I had the same experience, same gal, like with a stay at home mom. Yeah. Just did amazing, man. She, yeah. yeah. So don't be scared. You don't, you don't, everybody thinks like you look at us. Yes. We're very skilled at what we've been doing for years, but even if you're newer, you can still crush it. So yeah. get out, go through that database of all those old leads. Guess what y'all they're ready to rock and roll. So hopefully you guys got something out of this and took some notes. Um, yeah. and, and again, drop below if you guys want our uh, mission trackers, uh, deal trackers, as well as group coaching. And the other thing is if you guys have any questions, just DM Kayla or myself or put us in a group in Facebook and we're happy to talk talk to you as well. I think that'd be really great helping answer any questions. Yeah. And then if you have a good size budget for like 2023 for marketing dollars, send me and Kayla a DM and we have some ideas for you guys to be able to implement and use some of that money to where you're going to crush it. This the year. right way. <laughs> yeah, the right way. Yep. So I love cool. it. I love it. Thank you guys for coming on, James. Always a pleasure. Good, sir. Yep. You're welcome. Thank you. I'll talk to you soon. Okay. Bye guys. Bye.